It's obvious that if a government wishes to control its people and make sure they do exactly what they're told to do, they have to monitor their people. They have to know what they're doing uh, at all times. We may soon find ourselves living in, in, a, in a nightmare that I think would uh, even George Orwell couldn't have anticipated as to how much control we're putting into the hands of um, government, uh, large corporations, and people that perhaps we can't trust. If you're talking about wars, if you're talking about uh, money management, if you're talking about orchestrating crisis, these people behind it sounds like a conspiracy. If you're an average person, you've definitely got a data file on you in the hands of one of the many private companies that uh, compiles data about Americans for for the business world. In Austin, Texas, and in other places around the country, is they're using uh, smart thermostats. And they will, uh, the, the power company actually gives you a thermostat for free, installs it in your home for free, charges you nothing for it, but there's a catch. And the catch is to get this high-tech, fancy thermostat, you have to allow them, in the event of uh, you know, excessive power consumption, to reach into your home through radio waves and, and literally turn it off. So one of the basic things about using a computer on the internet is that your communications pass through the networks of various internet service providers, starting with the internet service provider that you are a customer of, and going through possibly several others and then ending up at your destination. And each of those entities, technically, has the ability to look at all your communications and to record all your communications. How'd you sleep? Good. How about you? Coffee's on. Thanks. One of the most alarming trends has been the increased centralization of personal information. I'm a little worried about Kate's cough. She's got a headache, too. She'll be fine. You are buying all sorts of stuff. That means the consumer credit folks will have you. But I will check online to see if anything matches. I guarantee you that many of these other database holders have files on you. You didn't hear her last night? Many, many more entities have wanted to know, well, what kind of a person are you? I wonder if she'll want to eat something. No, nothing here. She's always grumpy in the morning when she wakes up, though. Kind of like somebody else I know. Nice. Well, I gotta get going. Every day in so many ways we are being watched. We're told that it's for our own good, for our own protection, to make our lives better. But is it? I'm Grant Jeffrey, prophecy expert and author of over 26 books. I spent two decades researching and detailing how our fundamental freedoms are being systematically eroded, how our governments are not controlled the way we think they are, and how all of this ties into remarkable prophecies from over 2,000 years ago. Until recently, all of this would have been considered science fiction or the ramblings of conspiracy theorists. But each of the technologies you have just observed either already exists or is being planned on a drawing board somewhere. The evidence is all around us. There is no denying that we live in a surveillance society. And really, no matter what we do, there is no turning back. And in the 2010 census, census workers in the United States have actually been sent out 
in advance, a year in advance of the actual census being taken, they've been sent out with handheld GPS devices and told to go to every single dwelling in the country. Uh, that's an absolutely unprecedented undertaking. It's, it's, it's kind of happened without very much media mention or, or, or much awareness and now have the ability to pinpoint every, every single location in the country is, is really unprecedented. And it's not just in the United States that they're doing this. We actually found some documentation that this is part of a global effort um, that is uh, being promoted by the UN, by their statistics department. Uh, right now, we're, we're the most surveilled society in, you know, in, in history, obviously. Uh, this, this has gone into high gear. People don't realize that every time they use Google, every time they log on to the search engine, that Google's making a record of everything they search for, linking it to the cookies in their computer, linking it to the, their IP address. But going one step further, Google also reads all of Gmail, all Gmail messages that are sent or received. The reality is that Google is offering you all this bait to bring you in because you're the product. And once they get you in there, then they slice and dice your information and they sell you to the advertiser. And an ad came up, and the ad came up and it said, uh, Kalispell mum loses 37 pounds using some diet aid. Okay, and there's a picture of this mom from Kalispell, Montana. So, you know, great. You know, I have to come home eventually, school starting. I pack up my computer, I bring it home, connect it to my home here near Boston, and go back and visit the same web page again. And the ad comes back up, same woman <laughs> saying, Brookline mom loses 37 pounds using <laughs> such and such diet aid. So, of course, you know, they know whether I'm in Brookline or Kalispell because they have to ship the bits one place or the other. In November of 2008, there was um, a, an effort by Google to, to show that they were able to pinpoint a disease outbreak, a flu outbreak, before the Centers for Disease Control could do that, based on their sophisticated algorithm that they could tell that the person doing those searches had the flu. They were searching for chest congestion or thermometer or certain types of medication, cold or flu medication. And whenever one of those keywords would be entered into Google, they would, uh, it, it, would, it would set off a red flag. They would pinpoint that person's location based on their internet service provider, and then they would put a red dot on a map. And over time, you would see lots of red dots in certain locations on the map, and then they shared that information with the Centers for Disease Control. And sure enough, they were able to pinpoint those outbreaks two weeks in advance. Now, some people might say, well, gee, that's a really helpful thing to do. But when you log on to Google to look something up, you don't do so with the expectation that Google is going to be capturing your information, studying you, and handing that information over to the federal government. So I think a lot of people found it very, very invasive. And what it raises is the potential for Google or really any other Internet uh, service that you use to turn over other sorts of information. You know, who, who, who's concerned about abortion rights or who's a Democrat or who's a Republican or who is, um, you know, who, who has an interest in the Second Amendment? Well, because we don't always know the downstream risk and the downstream harms. There were rumors that a bank had done it to a cancer registry, that they'd taken a cancer registry, crossed it with names that, of people who were in their bank, and then tweaked the credit worthiness of the people if they had cancer. Someday, when all of our products and all other products have, instead of a barcode, have a tiny RFID tag on them, we'll be able to keep track of those products in people's homes. And their proposal was that a smart refrigerator would actually have uh, an RFID reader in the fridge. Every product that you put in the refrigerator, from the milk to the, you know, the, the cream cheese to the hot dogs, would all have an RFID tag in their packaging. And so the refrigerator would actually know its contents. There are plans afoot to actually monitor your garbage to every time you throw something into the trash can, the trash can would actually be equipped with an RFID reader and would monitor, are you throwing it into the right trash can? Is this a recyclable item that you're throwing into regular household trash? Um, how long did it take you to consume that item? How long was it in your home before you threw it away? The idea that we would be at a point where everyone would be watching every move and it would be tied into the television, we'd have personalized advertising, we would have uh, HMOs, for example, your, your, your health insurer, keeping tabs on 
you know, who's eating the haagen and, and how much green leafy vegetables is this family consuming? Because they're literally monitoring what happens in, in your house through your refrigerator. You know, some would say it opens up great opportunities to improve public health. Uh, other people would say, well, it opens up super, oppor- I mean, you know, horrifying opportunities for Big Brother to be right there in your refrigerator and sitting at your dinner table with you. With rising technology and uh, with the, the motivating forces from the government level to push that technology in the direction of capability of monitoring human activity. Uh, With that technology emerging, it's very frightening because it means that totalitarian regimes will very soon indeed have the power to control and monitor every human being on the planet. People working in major office buildings have uh, uh, an access pass, you know, a badge that they use to get into their office. Every time you scan that to get into the building, you're revealing what time you got there, what time you left. Uh, those records have actually been used by employers to determine whether someone was claiming sick leave when they weren't really sick. The reasons for surveillance and the need for better surveillance systems are compelling. If you want to keep track of your pets or children, or livestock or possessions, you can now put ID tracking devices on them. If you want to make sure employees are working the way they should, you can now monitor them. If you want to protect citizens from thieves, con artists, drug dealers, hate mongers, pedophiles, terrorists, and basically anyone and everyone who's a threat to society, you can now track, monitor, and scrutinize them. If you can save lives and protect property, why wouldn't you? And if you yourself are engaged in unsocial or illegal actions, your rights to privacy should be taken away. Those are compelling arguments. But is it right? 